हेलो गाइस वी आर बैक विद आर नेक्स्ट लेक्चर इन दिस लेक्चर लेट अस गो थ्रू टीसीपी टाइमर मैनेजमेंट गाइस सो बेसिकली व्हेन यू आर ट्रांसफरिंग द डेटा यू विल बी स्टार्टिंग सम टाइमर्स राइट आई वाज सेइंग अबाउट अ टाइम आउट एंड ऑल दोस थिंग्स राइट सो वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट दोस थिंग्स हियर गाइस ओके सो द टाइम मैनेजमेंट इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कांसेप्ट दैट इज यूज्ड व्हाइल ट्रांसमिटिंग द डेटा सो देयर आर फोर डिफरेंट और फोर इंपॉर्टेंट टाइप्स गाइस दैट इज नथिंग बट रीट्रांसमिशन फ्रॉम द नेम्स ओनली यू कैन आइडेंटिफाई गाइस retransmission timer so basically when to resend the data like how much time you should wait what is the ideal ideal time to wait is decided by this retransmission similarly persistent data for persistent timer similarly keep alive like how much time the packet should be alive like how many after how many hops so hop is nothing but from one node to another node transfer is nothing but a hop guys okay and a time wait timer so basically how much time you should wait for the acknowledgement or anything okay so first let us go to retransmission so retransmission i told you it is just nothing but resending the data when you didn't receive acknowledgement so from the name it is clear that retransmission of a data like when to do is the question okay so retransmission is done when we don't receive the acknowledgement like there is no confirmation from the receiver that he received the data so we will be resending it from the receiver due to lost of data lost of acknowledgement or corrupted data there are three different reasons okay so here the reason, here the question is when to retransmit or when to retransmit so we use the timer to consider this okay so we are having some formulas guys you can say okay so basically the first formula is nothing but smooth route time trip time so smooth route trip time is nothing but so assume that you are planning to go to some place okay so assume that the traveling time is 1 hour and you want to return back within some particular time and the traveling return time is also 1 hour so from the whole time you will be subtracting the 2 hours and you will be spending your time there right and you will be saving the 1 hour for traveling 2 hours for traveling so this is nothing but a round trip time guys so smooth round trip time if everything goes right you will be going in 1 minute and you sorry 1 km you will add sorry 1 hour and you will be returning back in 1 hour okay so this is smooth return time so basically can you say that every packet will return back in exactly 2 hours no we cannot say so that is the reason why this is not so used but modifications to this will be used okay so x to y and y to x is the total time okay so it will be represented in this way guys srtt equal to inf sorry alpha into srtt plus 1 minus alpha r where alpha is most commonly 7 by 8 and srtt so who will be deciding the time guys the decision of the time is taken by the previous value of srtt okay so based on the previous value we will be taking this and here we will be doing 1 minus alpha into r r is nothing but the time taken to get the acknowledgement okay to be on the safe side instead of exactly calculating it we will be multiplying it into two guys and we will be calling it as retransmission time out okay so you multiplied into two okay so this is one proposal and one more proposal is given by jack jackson jacobson okay he proposed that rtt where is nothing but a round trip time variation so here he is giving some variations right yes so basically the final formula if you ask it will be in this way guys rto equal to srtt so basically you need to calculate this first from this you will be getting srtt plus 4 into the value that is calculated here so the value calculated here is equals to beta into the previous value of this plus 1 minus beta by srtt the same thing okay so the same thing which we have which we found here srtt into r at the end sorry minus r okay okay so this is the formula you apply and you get the final result as rto that is nothing but the total time taken okay so you will be waiting for that much time and once that time has been crossed you will be retransmitting the data assuming that there is some issue from the server or the data is not sent or you, you didn't receive the acknowledgement or the data is lost okay okay similarly persistent timer so this timer is a set when the receiver is sending an update packet to the sender when the buffer is full so if you recall we discussed this in our previous lecture only when the buffer is full we will be sending a request and saying to stop the stop the client to send the data right and we will be informing him and then we then later on whenever we are having a free space in our buffer then we will be sending it right yes so if that is lost how much time you should wait that time is nothing but persistence timer guys so this timer is set when the receiver is sending an update packet to the sender when buffer is full but lost but due to we, we due to which both are waiting 
so once the timer expires so the sender transmits a packet to receive which replies with the window size so basically he will be requesting for the window size and window size like how much the size is free so based on that the server or the client will be responding back and they will be deciding whether to transfer or not based on the in, based on the values so if it is greater than zero they will be starting the transfer if it is zero they will not transfer that's the whole logic okay so the next timer is nothing but keep alive timer so from the name only you can say guys this timer is used to check if the connection is still alive or not so basically is the connection still available or not to transfer the data you will be using this keep allow keep alive timer okay is idle for a long time so if it is too idle for a long time you will be disconnecting them so assume that your friend is not talking from a long time okay you are in a call and suddenly he stopped talking and it's almost 2 to 3 minutes then you will automatically disconnect in the call right so the same logic keep alive timer here so once timer expires other ter other terminate terminate terminal is checked to see if the connection is still available if it if there is no response from there you will be directly disconnecting it guys so that's the whole logic here similarly timed wait so it is used to ensure that the connection on both the terminals have been closed and all packets have been died so basically the main issue when comes is that one will be deciding to close and the other is still sending the data in this situations there is a huge loss of data so to overcome this we need to get confirmation from the both the sides so that confirmation will be taken care by this time wait timer so basically it is the time which we wait we'll be saying time out right so that is this timer okay okay so i hope everyone got some basic idea about these timers right like time management in tcp so in the next lecture we will be introducing the udp and we will be going through the header guys okay udp header okay so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching